you mentioned Keegan Murray kind of developing offensively last year. Mm -hmm. The way he played on defense just forced me to recalibrate what I think this player can actually become. <laughs> that dude, especially like before the emergence of Keanu, guarded everybody, and it was mm -hmm. just absurd. What was stood out most to you or was most impressive about the de I would call it like a defensive leap he made last year? It was a leap, absolutely. I mean, just from what we expected when he was drafted to what he even showed as a rookie, it was a night and day difference what he was able to do last season. I mean, he was guarding everyone from, you know, smaller guys like Steph to to bigger guys down low. He was guarding LeBron. I mean, so he was guarding, you know, one to Sorry, four. John Collins was his center at one point. He was guarding John Collins in the game. I was yeah. watching everybody. Yeah. yeah. Just whoever you want to throw him at. All right. There you go. Like he can go lock him up. And him having that gear, I mean, I didn't see it coming at all but it completely changes his value and what he can be for the Kings long-term because his size, his offensive ability, his shooting, like that was valuable. That was good. But like if people had known that he was going to be this good a defender as well, I think the Kings would have taken a lot less flack for taking him third. Right. I think it would have been a little bit more like, should he be one? Should he be two? Like no worse than three. Like I think that that conversation would have been a little bit different, but it's, that was one of my favorite surprises of last season is just how good he was defensively and just using his length, using his body, his, you know, his positioning. Cause he's a really smart guy. He's got good size. You know, I don't think he'll ever be among the elite elite just from a, I mean, his, I shouldn't say that because I didn't think he'd ever be able to stay in front of Steph and he did it last season. So what do I know? But, you know, I, I don't know that his foot speed will allow, ever allow him to be the absolute cream of the crop defensively, but he's a very, very good defender. And it definitely flew under the radar last season. I think even some of the stuff he covered up for around the basket, mm -hmm. not as like a primary rim protector, but as a helper or someone coming like yes. recovering, I won't, I'm not going to predict this, but like, I just won't rule out like all defense for him at some point. I mean, that the 10 best, one of the 10 best defenders in the league is like a pretty high bar, but you just, if you just watched him at all, like you could just chop her in for like a game mm -hmm. or two and you'd be like, holy fuck, like this kid. And I did not see, like, I guess you might've saw hints of it as a rookie, but mm -hmm. I just, I, I was in like flabbergasted by it for basically the entire year. And everything I wrote about the Kings was like, the deep it had to be the Keegan Murray defensive leap was like the qualifier because it was I like I just I still I still so speechless over it. And so <laughs> I don't even know what his ceiling is now. And I do wonder, you already touched upon this with the offense. Like his role is probably gonna be, if you want to call it more streamlined or a little bit marginalized. He does at least play a way where he could still score like mm -hmm. 18, 20 points a game doing that. And if he's comfortable maybe not being on the ball as much, if you look at it through the lens of how much of the defensive workload he's ferrying that might actually be a good thing for yeah. him just because if they're going to, they're going to continue to ask him to basically do everything he did last year, even if Keon mm -hmm. Ellis is playing a ton. So I wonder if, if that helps, but then you run into the issues of like, well, is he going to want like a bigger offensive role at some point? And do you think he's capable of one? Like you mentioned some of the shot creation stuff he saw last year. Do you think in a vacuum that that's, you know, a part of his game that he does stand to broaden? I think he definitely is capable of it as far as just his ability to score. I mean, he can score at all three levels. He showed an ability to score off the dribble. He can obviously catch and shoot. I think the biggest thing with him being a bigger offensive force is just, that's not his mentality. Like he's not the guy who's like, I need to get mine, you know? And, and sometimes I think you need a little bit of that to be a really yeah. good offensive player. So I, I think he's perfectly fine and, I don't expect there to be issues if he doesn't have a bigger offensive role. He'll just be like, all right. Like, he's just like the most mellow and, and chill dude. And he'll just go out there and, you know, drop 20. And, all right, let's go. <laughs> and so I think he's capable of much more, but I don't think he'll have an issue with taking a step back. Like, I mean, if the team needs him to do more, I think he will. I think he'll just kind of do whatever's asked and do it well. Uh do you think he might be the the next like you know ball lit miss test when his extension comes around next year and it's like just a no brainer max and there will be some people oh, that yeah. are like sticker shot maybe he has like such a huge year but he dropped what was it forty five last year and I feel like that wasn't something that was talked yeah. about too much so he might be one of the next you know ball lit miss tests Keegan Murray oh yeah there's gonna be people that like gasp at his extension and it's it's just gonna be the rookie max like 
pencil it in now. It's done. <laughs> we'll, wait, we'll wait for like, I don't know, OG Ananobi's going to have like a huge game for the next week. Like, I just don't know why the Kings wouldn't have traded Keegan Murray for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, all the discussions about like, well, you know, so and so, you know, the Kings are interested, but I'm told they won't trade Keegan. It's like, yeah, they're not trading Keegan. <laughs> like, I, they're... I will probably guarantee you, though, that before the start of last season, I probably said that I would have given up Keegan Murray for OG Ananobi, like when he was still on the Raptors. And so mm-hmm. uh, that is definitely, for, if anyone has receipts, I'm sure that is something I said, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, Keon Ellis, deflection king, uh, pun yes. intended. Uh, holy shit. What did you make of kind of just his emergence and how like big of an impact did he have on a Kings defense that ranked sixth in points allowed per possession from March 1st on, which is based, I think he made his first start on March, March 1st of the season. Yeah. His insertion into the starting lineup was the turning point where suddenly the Kings were like a, not just a passable, but an actually good defensive team. It was such a fun moment for him to just kind of come out of nowhere and not just be a defensive guy. I mean, he was capable of contributing on offense. He shot well from three, like obviously still kind of a small sample size. So there is a little bit of that question, like how much of that is going to sustain. But if he can be the player he was at the end of last year, that's huge for the Kings because between Keon Ellis and Keegan Murray, you now have two really good defenders who can guard a variety of positions. And that helps cover up a lot of things. The other thing was that once he got in, like his intensity and his effort seemed to push De'Aaron Fox defensively. And Fox was playing much better defense as well. And maybe it's just like knowing that the guy next to you is going to do his job too. And it's not going to like your effort's not going to be wasted. Right. But like Fox is a capable defender. Like he's not a, a turnstile by any means. So like two really good defenders and then Fox who can play good defense, like suddenly you're in a much better spot than the way people traditionally think about the Kings defensively. Do we know if, I mean, I could have Googled this, but do we know if Keon Ellis, did he play football when he was in school at all? I do not know. Um, Some of the, the steals that he had as like catches, but just like reminded me of watching a football game, whether yeah. it was like a wide out or oh, like yeah, someone yeah. in the secondary. So, yeah. um, just say he's super fun. There are some players that are fun to watch on defense because it's not like, sexy all the time to watch it he's one of those guys like he was super fun um and so what do you his role on this team this year would you expect him to stay in the starting lineup where it's kind of like fox ellis and DeRozan, or are we penciling in kevin herter for that starting two spot like what would you think i would hope it's keon ellis i mean i think that especially given how much mike brown has talked about the importance of playing defense and contributing defensively and effort and disruption like all the things he's preached about the need for defense to be there as well like i have a hard time seeing him then be like all right this good defensive guard i found now has to go back to the bench for kevin herter like there is that little bit of like well do you lose your spot because you were injured like kevin herter got hurt and now he's out but like he was kind of on the way out anyway like he was playing pretty limited minutes like he was getting kind of the quick hook if he wasn't having a good night so i i feel like it should be keon ellis and then you know kevin herter can play a little bit low pressure off the bench can still get plenty of minutes with you know catching passes from sabonis can you kind of play alongside monk like he can you know find ways to kind of find his groove again but i do think that it should be Keon Ellis until proven otherwise. Like if Keon Ellis comes out and turns back into a pumpkin, like, yeah, make the switch. Like, you know, we don't need to, you know, stick with it too long, but I think it, he showed enough that he deserves the opportunity to stay as the starter. I wondered after the Devin Carter injury news, if it made it less likely that Keon Ellis would start because you wanted some of like the defensive punch to come off the bench and like Jalen McDaniels is, I mean, he's Jalen McDaniels. And so, but I would start Keon Ellis personally, even just, I think that that would probably end up being their best five man unit. Maybe there's some fussing and fiddling when you include Monk in Mm -hmm. some of them. So uh, I think he should start, uh, especially you mentioned the stuff about Mike Brown, who like seems to revolt against this idea that the Kings need to be offense, offense, offense. So that would fit with that motif. 